Good morning, guys. What's up? It's Midwest 2 Review here again. I am back with another video. Uh, and this time, if I could find my notes, this is going to be a reply, I guess, kind of, um, to a video that I saw from Clay Kuhn over at Kuhn Trucking. Shout out to Clay. Um, and he had a video where he was talking about ratchets. Well, you know, that's kind of my, my jelly, right? So, that being said, um, I'm going to reply. I'm going to try to hit off, uh, hit on some things that he called out in his video uh, in terms of like why, what type of ratchet do you like and why. It's kind of an older subject that's uh, been discussed before, but you know, with the um, innovation and evolution of the ratchet, um, Things change, right? And so people's uh, preference may change a little bit with that as well or may, may be swayed by certain changes in the market. So, all right, let's get into it. So the first thing, I got a list here, flex head versus standard, right? So let's go ahead and open up our ratchet drawers so we can have access to them. And uh, we'll talk about that. And I won't talk about only Snap-on. I'll hit on some of the other brands that I have as well. So flex head, for, this is all my personal opinion, flex head versus standard length. Um, I like flex head, so uh, I think that, you know, I find that a standard fix or a fix head is more um, beneficial and usable. Uh, that's probably not a good example, but like a, you know, just a regular fix head ratchet. That's a push button. I don't think, I, let me see here. Yeah, where are they at? Something like this. This is a standard ratchet. Um, it's got a fixed head. It doesn't swivel or pivot or anything like that. Those are useful. I find that a lot of times when you're working, if you don't need to have that angle or that bend, uh, but you're using a flex head ratchet that's non, that's non locking, it can be a bit of a hassle. Sometimes it wants to move on you or flex on you and you don't feel like you've got a secure enough bite. So for me personally, I like a, a, a fixed head versus a flex head, but obviously I understand the benefits of both. Um, the next thing, hard handle plastic versus hard handle chrome versus a, a, uh, a soft grip or comfort grip design. Personally, here in the Midwest, I like a comfort grip design. Um, you know, you, I might find myself working out in the weather. It could be 10 degrees Fahrenheit. It could be 50 degrees Fahrenheit all within the same day. And uh, I don't like having uh, to pick up a super cold tool, especially a metal tool. Um, and so having something that's got the comfort grip on there kind of serves as like a thermal block and uh, it, it helps to keep your hand just a little bit warmer so that you're not grabbing a tool and the next thing you know your hand's stuck to the tool. That's kind of an over-exaggeration, but that's the reason why I like a comfort grip. If I were to measure, I don't have my temp gun with me, I don't think. My shop is non-heated. I'm trying to see if I have my temp gun. I was just going to do a quick little check. I think I have it here. If the batteries are even in it. Yeah, they are. So let's see here. Um, if I test, if I test that, it's 39 degrees. If I test that, it's almost 42 degrees. So there's a couple degrees difference versus, you know, like measuring off the metal onto the comfort grip. So you're, I mean, that may not be much, but in some cases it may be a lot, right? So, um, I like a, I prefer a comfort grip. The other reason why I like a comfort grip is because I feel like you you get a better grip. It kind of distributes the load or the power from your hand, the force, and it's more evenly distributed. I think sometimes guys, when you have a very narrow or a very small handle, you grip on there and you apply more force, whether it be tightening or loosening, than what you need to. And I think that's because sometimes um, those handles kind of throw off your sense of feeling. That's my opinion. Now, some people could argue the same thing about having too big of a handle, too thick of a handle. It may do the same thing and give you a false sense of how much a low you're actually applying and cause you to over torque or, um, or loosen the bolt and eventually snap it or round it off. So there's kind of a, you know, a, you can argue that perspective from both angles, I guess, if you will. But pref preferably for me, I like a comfort grip. Now, I do like hard handles as well. Um, I have a lot of these that are kind of like my favorite designs in general of the ratchet overall. I like the color red. Um, I do like these. These are not bad. Uh, but if I find that if you're working, like if you're working in like an oily environment, granted, these won't 
absorb the oil or the, 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 the fluids like some of the other materials will, uh, but they can slip. So if you don't have a manly grip on something, uh, these will allow you to slip where something like a comfort grip or polymer type uh, material won't or elastomeric type material will ha give you more of a friction feel and um, reduce the likelihood of slipping. Same thing to be said with the metal. Obviously, on a metal handle, um, you're going to be slipping all, all day on that. I think he talked about, like, the placement of, like, your hand re relative to these grooves on there. I like snap-on grooves personally, uh, but I don't find that there's any benefit for me um, to have those grooves there. If they were just smooth or whatever, I know old snap-on ratchets are smooth, like the really old ones. And I don't see any benefit or gain with respect to having... Um, the, the little uh, cutout or, or machined in portion of that. Uh, let's see here. I got to keep going. Length. Uh, I think length is an interesting topic, right? Because a lot of guys assume that the longer the ratchet, the better. And, uh, and while your wife may argue that's the case, that's not always the case. Um, sometimes, you know, when you're, if you're, if you have a shop and you can get the vehicle off the ground, some, having a very long reach ratchet like this Capri Tools ratchet is awesome, especially if you're trying to like remove a belt or you're trying to loosen up a suspension component or something like that or a chassis component. This helps you kind of reach obviously into areas you have you otherwise would have to stick your arm and risk the opportunity or chance of getting burnt if you're working on a hot car or a car that's been driven and you have to get under it or inside of the engine bay. So having some length to kind of distance you is a, a good thing. But at the same time, if you're like a DIYer, DIYers probably don't get a lot of use out of these kind of ratchets if you can't get the vehicle off the ground. Because if you're on the ground, pretty much the only thing you're going to be doing with that type of a ratchet is using it to remove a belt, you know, something that's deep down. If you have a, tr a bigger truck, you may be to take advantage of that. But if you have a shot where you can get the vehicle off the ground, I think a long handle ratchet is, is ideal. Now, obviously, there's a thing called leverage, and if you're trying to... Uh, get some leverage on a bolt to loosen it or tighten it. Obviously, the longer you are from the um, the fastener, I mean distance-wise, the more leverage you can take um, benefit of based upon the length of the ratchet. Personally, me, I like ratchets about this length here. I think this is probably like 12, maybe 13, 14 inches in length. I like this. I think this is a middle-of-the-road type design where it's not too long, not too short. So you get a little bit of leverage, but you don't get too much. You get a little bit of length, but you don't get too much. You're not too short, not too long. It's like a good middle of the road length for me personally. So that's the kind of that's the kind of style of ratchet I prefer. Um, finish satin versus chrome versus coated. Um, I like chrome um, ratchets. Uh, I don't. Uh, I had the, the Matco stuff. If you go back to my older videos, you'll see where I had a lot of the Matco tools. I don't have any Matco ratchets. I need to get another one or two. Um, but, uh, I find that, um, the, uh, the coated kind of have the black chrome or whatever it is that wears over time, like a, like an impact socket, I guess it's like a, uh, whatever those, the black oxide coating or whatever it is. I don't see any gain to that. Um, uh, I think it's, if you, depending on where you're working at, it could be a hindrance because you could ultimately misplace it because it's too dark or it blends in. So I like a chrome finish. The satin stuff to me is more of like European thing. A lot of European companies utilize satin. Quiet, Shopcat. Hey, too loud. A lot of the European companies will utilize satin finish tools. Um, that's their thing. I don't, you know, that's whatever. I know a lot of cheaper companies too, like Power Torque and all those guys will use a satin finish. I don't like that for either a socket. I think I have, I had a tool that was a satin finish or a matte finish. I personally don't like that. Like I said, um, it's not that it's, it, it doesn't hurt or take away from it. It just feels cheap because I think there's too many companies out there that offer a satin finish and they're just not quality. So something like that, I mean, it looks, looks cheaper to me when you compare that to like a, a, um, a chrome finish. So just my opinion. Um, grip size, thin versus thick. So, yeah, I, like I said before, you know, that can be deceiving depending on what you're working on. I mean, Snap-on has a, even in their comfort grip sizes, they have a few different feels. Some of them are bigger, some of them are smaller. It depends on when they came out. Um, 
But uh, if some companies, like there's some Vim stuff out there and some other brands that are, they're just too big. They just, it looks silly to have a, a grip that's just gigantic. That it's like your hand, I think you lose some of your gripping power when the, um, when the, depending on how big the handle size can be. It's like you lose a little bit of that feel and it, I don't know what it does. It just seems like it changes how much force that you can generate with your hand if it gets too big. Some people have smaller hands, some people have larger hands. I have a l larger hand, so I like to be able to, I can almost wrap my fingers all the way around when I grab a ratchet, whereas some people just can't do that. So um, I prefer uh, kind of like middle of the road. I don't want it too thick, don't want it too thin. Um, I don't, definitely don't like, if I'm trying to really crank on something, I will not be using the chrome I can or the this type of, uh, handle here. I typically go to, if I got to really put some torque or some stank on it, I'm going to probably be using something with a comfort grip. Um, tooth count, 80 versus 72 versus 100. I think that's kind of the, see now I granted, I, there, there's been cases where I needed to have very minute movements, meaning that I, in order to get something off, I was, con I was confined between like a, a, a stop between a rock and a hard place, right? I don't have a lot of movement, so I can only ratchet so much right that's the times when a, a high tooth count ratchet comes into play like snap-on's 80 tooth i think they got a 100 tooth count ratchet now i think that's what this guy here is i think this is jumped to like the 100 tooth count I'm not 100 percent certain of that but um i also see where and I, i'm a firm believer that sometimes the lower tooth count like 72 64 or something like that is actually better in terms of strength some of these older ratchets here are, are low tooth count but because the paw and the gear have more surface area to contact one another, it gives, it, in my opinion, it reduces the likelihood of them slipping. Most of the time when you strip out a ratchet, it's because you've got too much torque on a small surface area. I mean, the pitch of the, uh, the paw versus the pitch of the, um, um, the gear, when they mesh together, there's just not enough meat there, and they end up slipping and stripping out, where sometimes having a lower tooth count means you typically get a larger tooth on both components, the pole and the gear, and it reduces the likelihood of slipping. If, you, if you've been like me, I got a lot of old ratchets that I've rebuilt. I've, I've rebuilt a lot of them because other things have failed, not because the tooth and the, 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 the paw and the gear mechanism slipped on one another. And that's just because there's more meat there to kind of bite onto, in my opinion. Um, let's see here. Uh, da, 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 da. Fix versus roto head. Flex versus roto head versus fixed head. Um, like I told you my opinion about the flex head. I mean, that's it's applicable when you need it. Um, I don't. It's not my go-to each and every time. The roto head, I'm like clay. I got it. I sold. I had like three of these. I sold off two of them and kept just one just so I would have it just in case there was an application where I needed it. But like him, I've only used this a few times. Um, I don't think it's a pointless design. I think that it probably has this application where, you know, you need to have something like that. Um, it's just not something I go to. And also, too, because of its design, these are easy to break. So if you think that you're going to put in the same amount of torque on this type of design comparative to like a, a flex head, not even a fixed head, but a flex head, these are much weaker than that. They will break. They will crack. I've, I've had snap-on ratchets that have cracked right here um, just below the pin, which means that they was way too much torque for that particular roto head design. So I think it's, it's useful depending on the application. Um, I'm not saying it's like a craftsman type novelty type thing. You know what I mean? Uh, obviously, everybody's making roto heads. So uh, there's something there. I just think that uh, it's got its use and uh, that's not all applications if that makes any sense um, um let me see here head size um you have some stuff that has let's talk about the the pear shape versus the round head um a round head ratchet for me i don't really care if it's round or not i think that you know the the pear shape design has taken off and the round heads kind of fell into the background it's kind of like you know this is old this is a snap-on this is a new old stock snap-on. I've got a few of these round head designs, and I can tell you I've not even used them. Um, I have them, but just, you know, a lot of the stuff I bought for the viewers to kind of see it because they've not seen all of them, and that's kind of why I have it. But, like, I have this right tool one here. Is this? Oh, this is SK. I do have some from right tool. 
Um, I don't grab it very often. I mean, I don't. There's no, there's no application where you would say you need a round hit versus a pair hit. I mean, if you think that that's wrong and that's a and that's not an accurate statement, leave it in the comment section. But there's no application I ever came across where I said, "Oh, I got to get that round hit ratchet out." It's just a look for me. Um, so, but I do believe there is something with thickness of the head. Um, you know, like the Snap-on has like their super thin line of ratchets. Um, where you get like that really, really thin head. I think that's more applicable in certain applications. I had one here recently. I was working on my bike and I needed a 13 millimeter socket and I needed a very thin ratchet head. And so I was I was very happy that I had these. Now, they're, those designs, if you go out there, you can buy just the socket set from Snap-on. You don't need their ratchet because there are other brands out there like this brand here, which is like Premier. I think this is the same style of ratchet that is with Power Torque. This is just as thin, if not thinner, and it's a high tooth count design. And you're not putting a lot of torque on there. I mean, even the design of the handle, you know you're not going to be cranking on that. So this is just for tight access applications. You can get yourself something cheap like that. Um, but having a very thin head ratchet is awesome. That's why I think Matco has a little bit of, of a leverage over Snap-on. If Matco can increase their reliability in their ratchets, they theoretically would be better in, a, in some sense, comparative to Snap-on, because they have a thinner head profile, but if they could generate the same amount of torque and power as a Snap-on head, then they would have a really good um, position in the market. Um, I don't like the, the Matco handle. It's kind of a weird shape. You know, people have talked about that. I think CP was the one that kind of brought up that whole phenolic or or uh, uh, flaccid type. I don't know how he referred to it as, but whatever. Anyway, it's shaped kind of weird, a weird shape, right? Um, so I'm not so big of a fan of that. And um, personally, um, you know, but that's just a design. It could, that could easily be changed. So um, push button quick release. Now, if you're working with snap-on sockets and a snap-on ratchet, you know how hard it is to remove a new snap-on socket from a snap-on ratchet. It's, and, and, and that's just if your hands are dry. Now, if you factor in having oily hands or greasy hands or some type of chemical onset hands or gloves, it's even more difficult. Um, I've even had to use a screwdriver or a flathead to just kind of pry the two apart just to get them off. And that's usually the case with the brand new socket, right? That's, it, it, as it wears over time, it kind of improves, but that's just a, a very snug fit. I mean, that's, I guess it's a good thing theoretically. Um, so I do appreciate, um, having a push button ratchet design. Let me see where that one was at. Um, yeah, something like this, it has a quick release, right? This is cool. The only problem is guys, remember there's a big old void right there. What does that mean? That means that this particular anvil is not as strong as a traditional or standard design handle. Now, granted, this does have a little ball detent, but that ball detent does not extend to the other side of the ratchet. Whereas this um, push button um, mechanism extends from the head, back of the head, all the way through the center of the anvil. So that means that when you're torquing on this, you can break that anvil very, very easily. I've seen it. I, if you don't believe me, go to YouTube, go to Instagram. There's tons of photographs out there of people who are snapping the heads with a quick release. So you just got to be smart about it. Once again, don't be a Neanderthal. Use common sense when you're using your tools. Um, so that's the push button quick release. Um, but yeah, so if I think if the application is, if you're working in an OLE application, I mean, having a quick release there is probably a good thing. Uh, just having variety. I mean, that's why Snap-on realizes guys like variety. They make a ton of different designs, and they try to cover the entire basis of design that you need uh, based upon your application. And look, guys get hooked on it. That's why we buy them, right? Um, let's see here. Finish, grip, tooth count, uh, length, hard, soft, flex, locking, standard push button. We covered all the topics. So I hope, Clay, I hope you're watching this video. I hope I answer your questions or your your public question about what, why do people pick what they pick? Um, and uh, yeah, that's just kind of like my, my take on it, my opinion about it. So uh, yeah, leave it down in the comment section. What do you guys uh, think about different types of ratchet designs and go over there and watch Clay's original video when he talked about this. I think he released it like a day or two ago. But go over there and give him some love if you're not familiar with his channel. Let him know that it was two reviews sent you. 
And uh, I'll catch you guys on the next one. Peace.